Hello again, this is Leisha. I teach digitizing classes at my girlfriend's quilt shop in Logan, Utah. For more information about the quilt shop and the classes you can take there, see the link in the description down below. This is the second video in our Palette 11 series. Once again, if you have an older version of the program, stick around because a lot of the information is the same. Today we are going to be exploring where to find the most commonly used tools and setting up the quick access toolbar. Remember to leave any questions in the comments section down below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you find it helpful. First, let's take a look at the flower button on the top left hand side of the screen. As I mentioned in my previous video, this is the same as a file button you would find in other programs. I do want to talk about a couple of these options, but some of them we're going to skip. Either because they're self-explanatory, we already covered them in the last video, or we'll be covering them later. You will find many of the things that you might expect, like access to the most recently used files, new page, save, save as, and print. First, let's take a look at save as. Like in other programs, it opens a file explorer so you can choose where the design is saved. And just below that, you can choose the file name. I would like to point out that if you are making changes to an already finished design, always, always, always use save as and change the name of the design, either by adding a number at the end or some other way of showing that the design has been edited. This way you will never lose the original. Print is how you create your color charts. I would like to talk about some of the settings in the print setup. Here you will find some of the same options you would expect, like a drop down menu to choose the printer and places to choose page size and page orientation. But you can see under embroidery print mode some options for how the program is going to generate your color chart. The option that I am most concerned about is color changes. Make sure that this box is selected. Otherwise your color chart will only show the number of colors that are required for the design, but not necessarily the order that the colors are stitched out in. For example, if you have a design that stitches out white, then black, then white again, if this option is not selected, the color chart will only show that you need white thread and black thread, but it will not tell you you need to switch back to white after you stitch out the black section. Because we have made some changes, make sure you press the OK button so your program will remember them. The next option in the file dropdown that I would like to talk about is Select Color Palette. This option is only available when you have a design open in the program. It will allow you to choose between different thread brands so that you can have access to the colors you actually own. This list is pretty limited and actually doesn't include the brand I normally use, so I keep mine set to Brother Embroidery. Feel free to select a different color chart option if you exclusively use one that is available here. Also notice that the color palette selector is a preset on your quick access toolbar. The last option under the flower button that I want to talk about is export. This is how you save your designs in different file formats. Once again, the program opens up a save window like you see when using save as, but you'll notice the drop down menu allows you to choose from different file formats. When you save in these file formats, the program will convert the design into stitches which means that it marks all of the small points on the design and uses that information to transfer the design into another format. Because the program saves the information this way, you can be sure that the design is not changed at all from the way it looks when you are digitizing in the PES format. Notice that not all file formats are included on this list. I have actually found a free program that will allow you to save into file formats that are not included on Palette. It is called Wilcom TrueSizer. There is a link for this program down below. This program is very basic. All you can really do is open a design to look at it, change the colors and resize it. But it does have an export feature with way more options than Palette provides. Now that we have gone over the flower or file dropdown, I would like to show you where to find the tools that you will use most often when you are digitizing. Along the top of the screen, you will see different tabs. These tabs are where you will find all of the different tools. The problem with this setup is that it can be very time consuming and a little confusing to find the different tools you are looking for, and that is where the Quick Access Toolbar comes in. Like I said in my last video, the Quick Access Toolbar is a customizable toolbar that you can change to include the tools you use most often. As we talk about where to find these tools, let's go ahead and add them into the Quick Access Toolbar so you can get used to using the toolbar and be able to find your tools more easily. I am going to walk you through setting up the toolbar the way I use it. But as you get to digitizing, you might find that you don't use some of these tools and that you might use others. When this happens, I encourage you to change the toolbar to reflect your needs. Several tools are already found on the toolbar. These are New Page, Open, Save, Zoom, Undo, Redo, Startup Wizard, Design Settings, Color Palette, and Instruction Manual. I keep most of these tools on the toolbar, but some I do not. For example, I never change the color palette and I hardly ever use the startup wizard. To remove these tools, simply right click on the buttons and select the option remove from quick access toolbar. It is just as easy to add the tools. 
Let's start with the Select tool. This opens up a drop down menu that includes Select, Select Point, and Select Start and End Points. Right click on the down arrow, select Add to Quick Access Toolbar, and now you have access to all three of the Select tools on the toolbar. Another tool that is very handy is Zoom All. This can be used after you've zoomed in or out to return to the default viewing distance. Next, I like to have my Shapes tool. This is the tool you will use to create all of your shapes while digitizing. Notice that when you select a shape to create, a new tab opens on the top of the screen. This tab contains all the tools you will need when making your shapes. We will go into more detail about these later. For now, let's go ahead and add a few of these to the toolbar. First, we'll add this tiny little thread spool. This controls your outline color. After that, we'll add the outline type drop down. Then we will do the same to the region fill color spool and the region fill type. Select the Home tab to return to the first tool tab. Now let's add the text tool. Once again, when you select one of the options, a new tab will appear. Let's add the font selector on this page as well as the font size. We do not need to add the color spool as this is the same spool used in the region fill section. Once again, we'll talk about the other tools in this tab in a later video. Back to the Home tab again, go ahead and hit the Select button to deselect the text tool. Now let's add the Modify Overlap. Notice that this is grayed out at the moment. This is because I do not have an object selected, but you can still add the tool to the toolbar using the same method as before. We will go into more details about this later. Just know that this is used when you have overlapping objects to remove excess stitches and avoid bulkiness. I also like to have the Arrange tool on my toolbar. This allows you to select several objects and perfectly line them up vertically or horizontally. The next tool I recommend you add is this little ruler. This allows you to select two points on the design and measure the distance between those two points. Now let's go over to the Image tab. The Open File button allows you to search your computer and open clip art or other types of images into the program to digitize. I also like to have this slider bar that controls the density of the image, meaning if you would like to see the design without the image, you can slide this to the left and the picture will disappear without completely deleting it from the work area. There are a lot more tools in this program, but like I said, these are the ones I use enough to have on the toolbar. As we go through the rest of these tutorials, I will tell you about these other tools and how to use them. Now that we have all the tools on the toolbar, you might decide you don't like where they're at. The easiest way to make adjustments to the order is by coming off to the side of the toolbar and right clicking. Select Customize Quick Access Toolbar. You will see a pop-up that will allow you to organize your tools on your toolbar. Simply click on the tool you would like to move and use the arrows to move it where you want. You can add or remove tools using this field if you want, but I found it easier to do it the way we did. Make sure that you pressed OK once you have finished making changes so that your program remembers them. The last thing I would like to go over in this video is the View tab. This controls what you see and how you see it. On the left, you have three options for how the program renders the design you are working on. Solid shows the design as if it were a cartoon or clip art. Stitches shows the individual stitch points on the design and comes in handy when you are digitizing over an image or when you need to make sure your stitch lengths are not too wide or too short. Realistic is a computer rendering of how the design will look when it is stitched out. It's not always perfect, but it's close enough. All of these options can also be found on the bottom right hand side of the screen here. The next few options control the dockers you see on the sides of my screen. Sewing order opens the docker on the left. This shows the order in which things will be stitched out, and you can even use this area to rearrange that order. I turn on this setting to combine my colors so that they show in one step. You can expand the step to make changes to the objects within that color. Stitch Simulator allows you to watch the design stitch out virtually. I recommend you always do this before you actually stitch out a design to make sure it stitches out the way you expect it to. I typically have this turned off though because I like having the larger work area. The Attributes tab controls these little tabs that are docked on the right of the screen. I try to have all of these turned on as well as the Imports pane which shows up on the same area. The Reference window shows a small scale picture of the whole design. It is nice when you are zoomed in and working on something within the design, but it also takes up space so I hardly ever use it. You can turn on a grid pattern within the work area and choose between a dot grid or a line grid and even control the spacing. I normally keep this off because I find them distracting. Instead, I use the rulers and guidelines to make sure things are straight and lined up. Simply click on the ruler to place a guideline, and then you can drag it where you want. To get rid of the guideline, click on it again. The ruler is also how you switch between inches and millimeters using this button on the top left hand corner of the rulers. As I said in the last video, if you're in the US, it's a good idea to get used to thinking in both measuring systems. This will make your life easier as you start digitizing. Well, this is everything I have for you today. As I mentioned before, please leave a comment if you have any questions, and like and subscribe if you find my videos helpful. 
See you next time.